All right, starting a new segment. What shall we pick? I'll, I want to pick the worst ones first. Yeah, for spalling and reducing. A lot of you guys are able to get this kind of stuff at a very good price because it's dicey. And you want to know how to reduce it. Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's why I'm focusing on this. And another reason is I really don't feel like napping something intricate on video. I started one yesterday. I started this one yesterday. And uh, this was my second attempt. This is my first attempt at something of this size with raw. These are both raw stone pieces and they're not that great as far as quality goes. Uh, I also have one that's excellent quality. I snapped it. Excellent quality and I snapped it. I said to myself, yeah, that's how I know that I'm not fit for napping that day. If I take something with excellent quality raw stone and snap it, and then this one is a medium grade raw stone. I snapped it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna blame it on the stone. This one is excellent quality. No. This stuff is excellent quality. It has a lot of cracks. This one is mid grade too, but it's I think I heat treated this one. So I was able to thin it without snapping it. Yeah, heat treating makes a difference. So I think I'll be working on this in the next video. Finishing it out. I didn't want to nap it on video because I uh, wasn't that feeling up to it yesterday. Yeah. I had to make too many adjustments to the environments too new. Yeah. Too many things to think about. I'm just, I'm getting I'm getting adjusted, don't worry. Alright, what was I? I think this is the worst one I got. So we'll see if we can reduce this down. We are going to reduce this down. We. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. Let's see. What's is that? This is a test. Yes, that was a test to see how good it is. It's not bad. Haha. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Oh yes, I can take big flakes. Makes it much easier when you can take big flakes. Yeah, without them snapping in half. Now this, this has got a crack in it. Right there, goes through there. It's not a good spot. Yeah, this is not a good spot to have a crack. No, there are good crack spots and bad crack spots. It's a bad crack spot because it's very similar to the other one where we lost the tip. Yeah. Dang it. It's got a big old square edge. This is what they call a square edge. Even though it's not square. It should be called something else. But you know, you gotta work with what other goober heads have named this stuff. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Well, maybe. Maybe I can do something with those two. I, I don't know. I will figure it out later. I'll probably toss it out later. Too small. It's not too small to be used for an arrowhead. It's just too small for me because I got like tons of those in my landscaping here in Vermont too. Believe it or not, there's some of that, the, some of this stuff here in landscaping with lots of little flakes that I, I can use if I wanted to. That is an overshot without bad consequences. Yeah. If you're gonna get overshot, that's the kind you want. No bad consequences. See how it minimized 
I didn't plan on this. It just happened to minimize, right? But that's luck. It could have been a lot worse. It could have dived and took an, taken more off than that. Can you plan on taking flakes to overshoot in areas like this and make it fully controlled? I suppose you can, but, you know, determination is not easy. I mean, it's, it's unpredictable. It could have dived even more than that, and you wouldn't have ended up with something that flat. It would have been more rounded. You never know. You never know with the terminations. So that's lucky. Very lucky. Okay. But if you've been watching the channel, you already know that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you know about luck. Luck in flint napping. Yes, you, know, you already know. If you've been watching the channel. Now, if you have not been watching the channel... And I didn't say anything, you would have said, Ooh, that was good. Fully controlled, good thing going on there. No, that's luck. I could say, yeah, that was my skill right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't know. Yeah. And I know you wouldn't know. And I know other guys know that you don't know. Who's on the up and up? That's how you know. If they tell you that they could be saying something that's not right. A lot of, a lot of these flakes, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. And it's important that you know that. It's important that you know that I don't know what's going to happen. Because otherwise, you're learning, you know, you're trying to learn flint napping, and you're thinking, oh, he's got such good results. Why am I not getting good results? Well, could be that the guy getting good results is actually getting lucky. You can't train for luck. You can train to minimize bad luck, and maybe to... Maybe to maximize good luck, I think it's easier to minimize the bad luck than it is to maximize the good luck. And what I mean by that is with in flint napping, to minimize the bad luck, you just make them thicker. Yeah, easy. Easy solution to minimize the bad luck, you just make them thicker. Make thick pieces. And some wise guys will say, well, I can't do nothing with a thick piece, especially notching. I need them thin. <laughs> yeah. You can notch thick pieces, but it is a pain, I must admit. Just don't notch. Yeah. No notching. Some guys want to notch right away. They want to make flutes from the base right away. They want to make clovers... Uh, in the second week of flint napping. First week, they want to be able to make nice preforms. Second week, they want to make clovis. Yeah. Don't worry. If you if you thought that way, it's not because you're dumb. That's because that's, that's what everybody thinks. And I thought that way too. Yeah. Because everything, every other skill requires maybe a week to get adjusted to it. But flint napping? Nah. Flint napping takes years. In many cases. Not all cases, okay? But many cases, flint napping takes years to make a Clovis. Or nice preforms. Dang it, that was not good. Well, you can tell there was a natural crack in there. Because of the patina on the inside. There was a crack already there. It's not my fault. Sometimes I save these chunks. Let's see. Sometimes I feel like a chunk. Sometimes I don't. 
Sometimes I feel I can I can save these chunks, sometimes I don't. If I can get rid of the cracks and the turtle backs, the cracks and turtle backs, then it's fine. But I don't know. I don't know. I think that's it. I got rid of the cracks. Now the turtle backs. Let's see. That was hurt my finger. I hurt my finger. <laughs> Come on. That's a mid grade. All right, did I get it? I got most of it. Come on. I know you can do it. Yeah, I got rid of the most of the turtle back. I can save that. That's a little baby by face. That's okay, I can save those. Oh yeah, that's good. This is one of those where I, I could heat treat it or I could not heat treat it. It's uh it's okay to nap raw. It would it would be nice to heat treat. But if I don't if I don't heat treat it. Yeah, it's not a big deal. I can still make something. It's sufficiently well. It's su it's sufficiently high grade to make something with it without heat treating. But there's some areas in here that feel a little bit tough. But I'm gonna try to maximize it. How many items do I have for the auction this week? I've only got like three so far. Yeah, and it's already Sunday. Dang it. But yeah, no, I had to focus. I have to focus on other things. I can't make flint napping a complete priority. I try. If I make flint napping a number one priority, I have to go live on an island somewhere. An island full of rocks. Yeah. That's the only way I can prioritize flint napping over everything else. And without phone, so no one can call me and interrupt me and cause it cause me to have an anxiety attack and physical pain. Yeah. No phone. No phone means no interruptions. Oh, I almost, almost was able to do it. All right, look what luck does. See the, uh, the, the uh, how should I say? The original condition of the stone will contribute to the issue of luck. See, not it's how do you minimize that bad luck? It's not possible to minimize that kind of bad luck, it's just there. You don't know about it, it's just sneaky. All you can do is damage control it, but to foresee it in order to avoid it, highly difficult if not impossible. It's not impossible because I can always stick it in my x-ray machine and see where the cracks were. Thing is, I don't have an x-ray machine to x-ray the rocks to see where the cracks are. But it is possible. Yeah. Wise guys. But you need x-rays or some other way to, I don't know what other way is there to find the hidden cracks. And even if you find the hidden cracks, it might not be straightforward damage control. You might say to yourself, it's not even worth it doing it. I avoid the bad luck by not even napping that. Yeah. And that, that'll hold true for anything. So, yeah. Oh, it's 
so it crackles down into this area. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take risks and and nap where I think it might it might help, but it's also dicey because I could snap it. It's right in the middle of the whole piece. That's where it's easy to snap it. I think it's solid enough. See, there's no crack on that side. And it's good material, so it may be solid enough for me to sneak up on that and get rid of it. Why am I trying to get rid of it with direct percussion when I know the accuracy could be a little off and it could it could be a little more stressful than indirect percussion? Uh, because I've already gotten kind of used to the bopper. I'm pushing my luck, but I think I like it. I think I like the bopper for this kind of thing, even though it's risky. Yeah. See, the, that crack doesn't go that far, but it is right there. I may have to use the indirect right now. Come on now. Yeah, that's good enough. I'll just put this in the bifaces. I'll see that crack later. If I don't, oh well. You know, if I if I don't see that crack, when I go to nap that biface, I will break it. But um, I'm usually pretty good at spotting that stuff. So I'll probably spot that crack before I actually finish that out. No worries, okay? Don't worry. I'm trying to let you down easy that I'm not finishing that one out and removing the crack. Because it's going to require me shifting. Uh, to remove that crack, I'm going to have to shift over to indirect percussion, which is a slightly different mindset than the direct percussion. I don't want to switch mindsets right now because I'm trying to get through these other blocks. These other chunky, these dicey chunks with this. Hold that mindset. I want to hold the mindset. New guys, pay attention to that because a lot of new guys they'll they'll change their minds. They'll change their activity without knowing that their mindset must be different, and they won't have any success. They'll go, "Oh, he tried the direct, and then I switched to indirect, and then I switched to." Using another, instead of copper, I used steel. And then I switched to hammerstone. And they're switching and switching and switching, thinking that that will help. Without knowing that each one of those tools that I just mentioned is a different mindset. Now, some people respond well to changes in mindset. I've seen that before. They switch the tool. Voila. It, it works better for them. It, and it's a whole different mindset. Some people will switch tool and have a same mindset and get better results. It's a mystery to me, but I've seen it. There's exceptions to everything. There's people who are wired differently and, and such and such. So I'm just speaking in general terms. If you are a new guy and you're changing your mindset quite a bit, you may be experiencing issues, more issues than you normally would. That door blew open. More issues than you normally would. So let's try to stay on, in the same mindset. All right, hold on. Yeah, the thing about plastic is the the, uh, the heat from the sun distorts and changes the shape of the plastic shed. Yeah. So now the door doesn't fully close. So any slight breeze, I don't have a lock on the inside. I need to install a latch on the inside of the door so it doesn't blow open like that. 
anyway yeah the plastic shed changes its shape in the sunlight it starts to warp and uh, that sort of thing it's like it's 68 degrees inside and 30 something degrees outside so it heats up well I'm amazed at how well it heats up it, with the sunlight in here 30 degree difference just with sunlight hitting the sides of the shed that's amazing Yeah. Uh oh. I was probably out of frame there. Dang it. Did you see what I was doing? I'm just cleaning up the edge. This is a mid grade. Yeah. It might look like it's napping well, but up here. It's, there's some issues with the, the graininess of the stone. The rest of it's pretty good. But it, this, this area right here is not good. And when I go to thin it, it's going to rear its ugly head. I need to take down this side here to get rid of some of that. This side's better than this side. And people ask me, what's the difference between a fine abrader and a coarse abrader? Why do you use each one? A coarse abrader is fast, uh, but a finer abrader allows better contact with the tool. Better contact with this. So that's, you know, I've been trying to figure out, figure out an easy explanation of why I switch because it's second nature to me now I don't really pay attention to why but I think the why is there's better contact with the edge with a finer abrader it takes longer to abrade it down it's not as aggressive but it's smoother which means it's, it's you're gonna make better contact why is that important? Because you don't lose energy with the contact. And it's important to maintain your energy during the strike because that's what creates long flakes. Maintaining the energy with the strike, not losing any, especially on the follow through and the length of the flake will give you, you know, good results. Hopefully, hopefully. It's a game of chance. It's never fully controllable okay there's a lot of hope that it will work yes you didn't know because other guys are telling you it's fully controlled yeah I know they're not doing you any favors they're not doing you any favors by telling you this stuff is fully controlled or high, even highly controlled. It can be, but only under certain circumstances. What are those certain circumstances? Huh? huh, huh? You're going to ask. I know the wise guys go, okay, well, well, we only want to know what's certain. And we only want to know the specifics. Don't be general. <laughs> Tell us everything we don't know what to ask for. That also... Can make stuff up and tell you exactly I don't know exactly what's going on you're gonna have to use both what I say and your own eyes to figure it out yeah don't don't discount your own eyes And don't neglect your eyes because you don't like what you hear. 
I don't like what I'm hearing, so I don't want to look at it. <laughs> yep, there are people like that out there. They don't like what they're hearing, so they're not going to look. But don't let anyone tell you that it's uh, fully controlled, because it's not. And even the most advanced snappers will depend upon luck. In, in many cases, especially when it comes down to the exceptional thinning type stuff. They'll admit that, yeah, I can only thin it down like that in some cases. It doesn't always work. What does that tell you when they say it doesn't always work when I try to thin it down a lot? That tells you that it's luck involved, that there is luck involved. Doesn't always work. It doesn't always work because they might not be having a good day. <laughs> okay, yeah, they might not be having a good day. Okay, fine. But as you make hundreds and hundreds of these, you get to know what's a bad day or what's a good day. And what's bad luck and what's good luck? But you got to make hundreds and hundreds of these. Okay? Yeah. Moral of that story is, if you're not having a lot of success, uh, just keep doing it. Yeah, go against the, the normal or what the normies tell you. Normies, normies will say that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. No, in flint napping, that is how you learn to flint nap, by doing something over and over and over again until you get different results. Obviously, they're not flint nappers. Obviously. Yeah. In flint napping, you got to do it over and over and over again until you get different results. And you will eventually get different results. Now you might say, it's, we're not doing the same thing over and over again. We're getting better and better, uh, supposedly, right? Yeah, okay, fine. You're getting better and better, but it's still you're still using the, the bopper in, in a certain way. Basically, in general, everything is pretty much the same. You just got to get better at doing it. It looks, someone who's brand new and, some, and me, we're looking... Very similar. We can look very similar and do exactly the same thing to start with, but get different results because there's subtleties in there. Very subtle differences in getting a long flake and cracking it in half. This could have cracked in half. It's just very subtle things that you cannot see on video. You gotta do it over and over and over and over and then you'll get different results by just subtle differences in the technique. It looks almost exactly the same. A new guy breaking in the stone, you know, if you just look at the positions of everything, will look the same as an advanced snapper, but the advanced snapper will get better result. How is that even possible? It's because there's only, I mean, a slight difference will make all the difference. See, now it cracked. It could have cracked earlier, but now it cracked because I, I don't know where I hit it. But there was a natural seam in there. Okay, so see that. So yeah, I, I expected that not to be a good spot, but I didn't expect it to be broken that soon. Ooh, that went all the way through. Maybe that crack might have gone all the way through. Yeah. So th that was not avoidable. Yeah. So what am I gonna do with these? I don't like I don't like dealing with that kind of chunk. This kind of chunk is a little more manageable. Yeah, if it's gonna give me too much anxiety, I don't nap it. It's it's kind of rare that I don't nap. An odd piece, but I don't like napping these. Yeah. Nope. It's just a personal preference. It, it can be napped. Yeah, that's good. Just 
whittle it down, whittle it down, whittle little by little. Yes, maybe, I don't know. Gosh, it's not an easy one either, but it's a little bit more manageable. I'm going to try to take a big flake off of this side and then discard the top part. Let's see if it'll work. No. Well, it almost did. It reversed itself. It could have been like this if it held together. See, this was what I was going after, but only if it held together. Yeah. So what happened was the incipient crack went in, it looked like. And then as I was tapping it, I, I put too much downward pressure on it. It still managed to flake, but I put too, way too much downward force. Yeah. That's an opposite reverse hinge. I don't know what you call those. Yeah, we'll, just, we'll just toss that. We'll keep some of these. All right, we've got one more left. It's 31 minutes. Let's just go through this one real fast, and then I'll wrap up this, this series. Yeah. And uh, just as a reminder, all these were out in the snow all winter, okay? So we didn't, we didn't get much. Oh, there we go again. What is going on? We didn't get much in terms of prolonged extreme cold weather because the I found that the river didn't freeze over completely uh, didn't freeze over enough for the ice fishermen to come out I was just talking to my stepbrother-in-law but it was out in the snow and ice and the rain all winter that's a that's a reverse that's an opposite reverse hinge yeah where it pops out the top instead of popping out the bottom I guess that's a hinge. A reverse hinge is when it goes the other way. So I guess that's a hinge. Yeah. I don't know. Should I continue? I'll save that, yeah. That's manageable. It besides it's excellent quality. Yeah. I'll I'll save chunks like that that are excellent quality. So there was a crack right there. I got rid of that. There's some cracks in here. All right, that's good. Let's see what I can do about removing this mass. Almost perfect. Yeah, well, I was trying to cheat right there. Ooh, I like it when it does that. Yes, I like it. Now it's a biface. Except it's got cracks. Let's see. Let's wrap this up. My skimming off those cracks. And everything is nice. Solid. Not quite. I can still see an issue. Well, maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, there's still an issue in there. Does the issue require a tissue? No, this is not one of those tissue issues. Let's see. Once in a while, it's a tissue issue because it can open up and go right across. But, yeah. I don't see. I don't see tissue issues. It's just normal, normal stupid stuff. Yeah, nothing major. Yep. All right, so yeah, I got rid of all the nasties. I installed some incipient cracks there, but it'll be more narrow when I finish anyway, so. All right, is that it? I'll search through my flakes. I'll keep the ones that won't give me no heartaches. Flakes that don't give heartaches, those are the good ones. Which ones will not give you a heartache? 
you know they got to be relatively flat and relatively large and of good quality yeah this might be too too thin thinness helps especially if you're just starting out you can just make arrowheads by chipping around the edges how thin can I make an arrowhead that thin just chip around the edges yeah it's it's legal you can do it it's not against the law it's not even against the law of the West you know remember the old cartoon this is law of the West what was it deputy deputy dog or somebody like that anyway Alright, that's it. There you go.